the International Nuclear Watchdog. And what the chief of that organization says is Iran and North Korea up to. They are posing a global threat. Rafael Mariano Grossi, the director general of the Inter International Atomic Energy Agency, spoke one on one with CBS News's Pamela Falk. I want to play a bit of that interview. Iran is moving on with its, with its nuclear program. As you know, this is not working or operating in a vacuum. This is done um, in, in the framework of an agreement which was signed by the uh, P5 plus Germany, the European Union, back in 2015. You remember that uh, the United States withdrew from this uh, agreement uh, back in, in 2018, a couple of years ago. And then from that moment on, uh, Iran, as a reply, uh, as a response to, to, to this, um, uh, decided to gradually start um, diminishing its compliance with this um, agreement. So I would say on the one hand, of course, uh, there, is, um, there is a forward moving um, in, in, in the Iranian nuclear program. The good thing is that the IAA is still there to, to say uh, what's happening. The future will depend a lot on what uh, the countries which are party to, the, to this agreement decide um, in the future. And I would say in the next few weeks and months, I'm sure there will be renewed activity um, uh, around it once there is a new administration in Washington and some other factors converge to what we hope will be uh, a, a, a negotiation. What is your message to the, to the president-elect? I think he has uh, indicated or uh, what his intentions are. Um, a dialogue with us will be indispensable because since um, um, if you take 2015, when the agreement was first signed and the implementation of that agreement happened to now, a lot has changed, as I'm saying now. So the situation on the ground has changed. So. Uh, the negotiators, the policymakers in Washington and elsewhere and in the other capitals, including Tehran, uh, will have to base themselves on the new situation on the ground. Iran has more than 12 times the amount of enriched uranium permitted under that deal and that it uh, it's continuing to enrich uranium to a purity of up to 4.5%. Um, how does. do you get Iran back to, to ground uh, to compliance. Well, I think uh, the the different sides have different expectations of what is going to happen, and I think I shouldn't speak for them. It's clear what they expect, uh, it, and it boils down, I think, to the uh, philosophy of the original agreement, I guess, um, which is a reduction under IAEA inspection and verification uh, and the controlling a, a number of activities. This is a very comprehensive agreement. What they are doing, the original agreement specified uh, a certain degree of enrichment, uh, which was fixed at the time at 367 and now they are enriching at four point something. Let me say, because everything should be taken in a, with a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a certain context, that the military grade is above 90%. Um, but of course, once you start enriching and you move closer to 20% or uh, figures around that, the process of getting your uranium enriched at that level, um, which is of um, you know military quality, becomes easier and becomes faster. So this is why everybody who is interested in this is, is looking at this, is watching what's, what's uh, going on. But the reality is, is that the levels at the moment are low, but above what was agreed. And this is what is um, of some concern. There is a pattern, there is a deviation. Of course, Iran has its, its explanations. They explain it to us here in Vienna and to the world, because they say others left, we leave.
And turning to another uh, concern of uh, the world, North Korea. Last time we were there was more than 10 years ago, uh, 2009, um, which does not mean that we are completely in the dark. We have been following what is going on there through analysis, through satellite imagery. Um, you know, all of these are techniques that are very sophisticated, quite developed, and allow you to have a pretty good idea of what's going on, the, the, the kind of activity that is taking place, the, um, the outputs, the estimated amounts of material which are being produced. So you're not completely in the dark. That is one thing. What we expect, and actually I have the conviction that once there is some um, agreement, be it bilateral, if, if the, the bilateral track, as it was the case over the past few year, four years with, uh, with the current administration in the United States, that was the preferred course of action. In the past, you had a bigger table with more um, participants, you know, Russia, China, Japan, uh, some others were there around the table. So we don't know what kind of format this, uh, this negotiation will uh, take, but one thing is for sure, once there is an agreement, we will have to go and inspect, otherwise that agreement has no value. How important, even though the vaccine is being, is being rolled out, how important is testing Conti how, do, how, how important does it goes, it, continue? It goes, it goes, Pamela, it goes be much beyond testing because the testing is like addressing the problem, the mess we are in at the moment. But through nuclear technologies, and this is where I, I, I want to perhaps take a second of your attention, we are working on preventing more zoonosis. And now we have put together a project which is called Zodiac for zoonosis disease integrated action, where we put together all these technologies that we have the, by using uh, isotopic tracers and other nuclear technologies. We work with veterinary labs around the world. Um, so the idea is that we will have this network of people using nuclear technologies to detect faster, much faster, when um, a new zoonosis comes. And it will. If you look back a few years, you will see a very concerning pattern which shows to you that in my calculation, uh, every two years we have one. We had SARS, we had MERS, we had Zika, we had chikungunya, now we had COVID-19. So it is obvious that this transit from the, uh, from the animal um, um, to, the, to the human is, is, is and will continue repeating itself. So when you have the, the elements to identify and the rapid um, um, uh, connectivity uh, among the, the veterinary labs, uh, then you have, you're better prepared uh, to face whatever could be coming. So we are trying to be helpful at both levels.